Okay, so we're here with um, Professor William Desmond. Um, Professor Desmond is the David Cook Chair in Philosophy at Villanova University in the States. He's also the Thomas A.F. Kelly Visiting Chair in Philosophy at Maynooth University, Ireland. And he's also the pr Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at the Institute of Philosophy um, at Leuven in Belgium. And uh, we're very pleased um, to have uh, Professor Desmond here with us. He's, you know, he's an Irish man and, you know, he's familiar with universities, so uh, with, with Maynooth University. So uh, we're, we're very pleased to have you here, Professor Desmond. Well, thank you very much. My, it's my pleasure to, to, to talk to you and also to look forward to the conference. Excellent. Excellent. Well, just on the conference, um, the theme of the conference is the future of Christian thinking. I wonder maybe, you know, if you'd just like to maybe say a few words just on, on the significance of that theme, the, the timeliness of it, you know, being addressed in, 20, yeah. well, in 2022, next year, and just, just some thoughts on that. Well, obviously, there, there are many dimensions to the issue, uh, and I can only I'll just offer a thought or two. Um, mm. But uh, one of the things that I find especially notable in Western cult culture countries generally is, uh, particularly among uh, intellectuals, is a diminished um, openness towards the religious. Um, this is an issue that has affected Ireland in its own way too, but in my own experience as, a, as an academic over 40 years now at this point, mm. um, it seems to me that what I call a default atheism has become very widespread among intellectuals. There was a time in earlier 20th century when a lot of uh, academics and intellectuals, if asked, would confess to having uh, religious beliefs, even mm. if they enter directly into their philosophical or um, their scientific work. But mm -hmm. uh, recent uh, surveys indicate that uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, diminished uh, considerably. But the, the paradox I find is this, that as, uh, so to say, advanced intellectuals uh, move away from religion or perhaps even don't understand it, never has the uh, sense of religious effervescence been so widespread in the world as a whole. I, I mm -hmm. about the world now, not just simply the elites of Western intellectual culture. So there's a strange disjunction between um, the what ha what's happening on the ground in, in in the world and what we have experienced in in, in western countries mm -hmm. um now i i just mentioned this that I, this this particular conference is, is, is we're interested in philosophy and christianity mm. i think that we also have to ask the general question about this this diminished sense for the sacred and the holy mm which I think has a kick-on effect also in relation to a certain openness uh, to Christianity among intellectuals. Mm -hmm. And in, in, I, I, I mentioned default atheism, but I, I have this book which has just appeared, which is not, I'm not uh, plugging it or anything, but the title is called God Sends. Mm -hmm. and the subtitle is From Default Atheism to the Surprise of Revelation. So, it is actually an exploration of the notion of a godsend. It's a word we still use in everyday language, uh, often evacuated of its religious sense, of course. But I see it as a sort of an opening, allowing us to explore some of the possibilities here. But the the extremes are default atheism and then the surprise of revelation. And my explorations and studies want to move between those two extremes. And it, that's very relevant to the relationship between philosophy and Christianity, because especially within the continental tradition, the, the, the either indifference to Christianity or hostility towards it in continental philosophy has been pronounced really since around the time of Kant and afterwards. Yeah. And I, I see my own work as very much understanding that, but also at the same time struggling uh, in a constructive spirit against it. So mm. this... So it, 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 it's, it's the broader sense of being religious, but it's also the more um, specific uh, relation to Christianity, which after all is, is, is the dominant tradition which has shaped us mm. uh, for uh, 1,500 years more, 2,000 years more in, in, in the Western world, certainly. Sure. Great. No, that, that, that's very good. And, 
you know, you yourself, you, you, you're an Irishman, you have an association um, with Maynooth, um, St. Patrick's College and Maynooth University, and um, the conference is being held here. Do you see there to be any sort of, you know, significance or timeliness to the fact that th this is occurring in Ireland now at this time, and this is occurring at, at a place like Maynooth, where you have, you know, these institutions here with a, a long history and engaging with these topics? No, no, it's, uh, I mean, there's a kind of a, a double pronged dimension to that. There's the sort of an Irish person's understanding of Maynooth as extending back into a long history of Christianity in Ireland. Mm. Like Maynooth is only, you know, the beginning of the 18th, the 18th century, but the history of Christianity in Ireland just goes back 1500 years plus and so on. But mm. um, Maynooth is uh, a place, again, in the eyes of the advanced intellectuals, in Ireland certainly has often been looked at as a, a sort of clerical fortress, not mm -hmm. only to, uh, in, a, in, a, in a proper way to intellectual challenges and uh, possibilities. Now, mm -hmm. again, I, I, I can't speak as a historian in terms of earlier times, but I, I have the feeling that uh, there's a certain picture of Irish history, recent Irish history, recent Irish Catholicism extending over the last 150 years that has tried to still paint Maynooth as a fortress of a sort of, if I can use a phrase, a reactionary Catholicism. Mm -hmm. I don't over phrases like that, but I use them just to describe the, 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 the circumstances. So it, it's, 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 it seems to me actually to be deeply significant that Maynooth is now a place where in fact, this, uh, a, 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 a crossroads, a, a meeting place, where uh, intellectual currents from all over the world can come and talk about the relationship between philosophy and Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, turning from, a, it's, it's not turning towards the past and asking the question whether that is a justified mm -hmm. past or not, but certainly in terms of promise for the future, mm -hmm. Maynooth is a, a, a place of crossing, if I could use a metaphor like that, where... Mm -hmm. Uh, philosophical thought and uh, the Christian faith can come into communication with each other in, a, in, in new and hopefully very fertile ways for the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have to agree um, that, you know, that having this conference here, you know, it, it does signify that kind of, you know, thinking which is going on here at St. Patrick's uh, Pontifical University in Maynooth that, you um, there is a crossroads and a cross sort of pollination of different ways of thinking and all the different speakers that we have at this conference from all over the world are going to be yeah. speaking to that here uh, in Maynooth. So it's, it's a great thing to see. Um, so uh, could I just, just add on that too, but uh, my, again, I, I, I'm associated. I, I taught in Maynooth for a year way back at the beginning of the 1980s mm -hmm. to America, I came back to Leuven and have had a relationship with, Maynooth, uh, you know, since I suppose around 2000 or so. Mm. So I've seen the, the, the differences come and go, but mm. the major change, of course, in Ireland is a certain secularization of society. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Again, that's a very ambiguous and uh, uh, sometimes secularization is not actually in an open sense, opening up a space for the non-religious, so to say, but is 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 more a deconsecration of Irish life yeah. and the signs of the sacred and the sim symbolic life and liturgical presence of, um, of, of, of religious faith in mm -hmm. life. Are, there's, there is a kind of silence among intellectuals about the, 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 the kind of uh, the substance that that gives to, to life uh, and the, the confrontation between not only secularization, but a deconsecration of life, mm. the accelerating powers of science and technology. Mm -hmm. This is a huge issue, which, in, in my view, Irish intellectuals and commentators have not been taking, taking up in any uh, you know, satisfactory way. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a massive issue on a global scale, and it's also... Uh, deeply felt in an intimate sense, I think, in uh, in, in in Ireland, mm -hmm. it's given its uh, history as a, as a as a Christian people. Yeah, yeah. I, I I hope that this particular conference also will have some 
some f- sort of seeds of future promise mm-hmm. on that particular score too. Sure, sure. Well, one of the things that we're doing here at St. Patrick's in Minuit is we are inaugurating a, an annual lecture on Christian philosophy. And we, we'll have, you know, Christian philosophers, you know, philosophers who work in this area, that they'll come and give a lecture every year. And you very kindly agreed to be our um, inaugural lecturer um, on Christian philosophy, which um, we will have at the conference. Um, would you like to maybe give a wee sort of insight or an indication as to what you'll speak on at that lecture? Sure, absolutely. Right. Well, first of all, I'm very, uh, very happy to be honoured. Uh, it is an honour and a, a pleasure to be invited to speak uh, as, 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 as the inaugural lecturer. Hmm. Um, the title that I have is called Christening Philosophy. And again, exactly what in detail I'll write, I don't quite know at the moment. But the notion of christening... Again, in, in, in the history of philosophy itself, there's been a number of possible relationships between both religion and philosophy in a general sense, but also between philosophy and Christianity. Um, uh, I think in the 20th century, certainly in continental philosophy, Heidegger's claim that a Christian philosophy is a, what is it, a, a, round, a round square or mm-hmm. yeah. something like that. In other words, he just simply dismisses it. Yeah. In, the phases, of course, there's, there are many Heideggers, but that's one of phases. Yeah. And so generally, from a long tradition where you had this faith-seeking understanding and uh, a dialogue of various sorts between philosophy and theology, um, the, the whole relationship between Christianity and philosophy is uh, either pushed away or, I believe now, ought to be, become a source of uh, fertile reflection for philosophy itself. And Mm -hmm. I point to something like this, that when philosophy and uh, religion and Christianity push themselves away from each other, they they lose something in terms of an essential challenge Mm -hmm. to their own uh, uh, spiritual seriousness, as it Mm -hmm. were. In earlier times, I think philosophy itself actually imbibed a kind of spiritual seriousness from its dialogue with with, uh, with 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 religion and, and Christianity, but that that has again diminished significantly, I think, in professional philosophy in recent centuries. So, but so the notion of christening philosophy is is trying to name the notion of a christening, as you know, is, is Christian the, the baptism, but giving a name to philosophy in such a way that it's uh, I would put it this way: it's companionship with the religious and with the Christian is opened up as a possibility. Mm. Uh, again, if I, if I can just uh, just say one more word on that, mm. in, in, in God's sense and just generally, I've been trying to develop what I call a companioning relationship between philosophy and religion. Mm. I, I'm, I'm trying to think not just to I say two parallel lines that perhaps will meet in eternity. Mm. I'm also trying to think of their relation as not one of, a kind of subordination in, in modern philosophy in particular the assertion of philosophy's autonomy mm. has been to again just to excommunicate the religious from it so the notion of a companion is someone that you don't necessarily have to confront as a as, a, as an opposite you can enter into dialogue in a plurality of ways you can be chastened or contested by your companion um, the notion of companionship is comes from the companus breaking bread together. Mm. That sense of um, uh, a, a new companioning relationship between philosophy and uh, Christianity uh, is 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 what I, I'll say some words about and try to elaborate what I mean and compare it with some other uh, understandings. Mm. Again, as I say, for the moment, I, 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 I have many ideas that uh, will take, I hope, more co- uh, concrete form on the page by the time the conference comes around. But that's, mm-hmm. that's generally what I want to explore. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would just say just one last word on that particular point. Um, the, it, 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 the, 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 I'm, I'm speaking now from a more philosophical point of view, but Again, and if you like, more from a continental point of view in post-Kantian sense, but that sense of welcome and hospitality between those two, again, I do feel has been severely diminished uh, 
in, in recent uh, uh, centuries. Again, it's not that the dialogues between philosophy and Christianity, dialogues between philosophy and religion don't take place, but the resources on the part of philosophers to be able to think what might be at issue mm -hmm. uh, in, in, our, in our religious being uh, are, are, are sorely un, un, underexplored, in my view. Yeah. When you take the, the self, if you take the self-image of philosophy up to maybe a hundred years, two hundred years ago, one expected a philosopher to have something to say about God, even if the mm. philosopher was an atheist. Yeah. And now there's in in so many places, not all, but in many many places, I find a kind of silence about this uh, absolutely central and fundamental question. Mm -hmm. Do sure. you? Yes. So I'm, I'm trying to address that situation also in yeah. my, my own thought. Yeah. Great. Well, um, Professor Desmond, thanks very much for giving us your time and some sort of insight um, on what you'll speak about and your thoughts on the conference. It sounds like, you know, an exciting paper that you'll be presenting, and I'm sure we'll all want to follow up with uh, your new book, God Sends. So, <laughs> right. we'll, we'll look forward to having you in Ireland next year and welcoming you here and um, sort of. Please God, everything goes well, and um, we'll, we'll have yeah. you here and look forward to it. All right, I'm looking forward to it very much, and um, thank you for speaking to me today. Uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, we'll be in touch in the, in the in the time to come. Absolutely. Well, Professor William Desmond, thanks very much for your time today. Mm -hmm.